dedicated to the strength of the nation. From Hollywood, your theater of stars. Proudly, we hail. we hail your theater of stars. Now here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the motion picture world's finest talent appears in plays you'll enjoy. Billy Burke is our proudly we hail star and appears in a brilliant comedy, The Fabulous Deliers. Miss Burke portrays the mother of a very confusing family and does so in her usual excellent manner with hilarious situations. And now, the curtain rises for Act One of The Fabulous Deliers, starring Billy Burke as Cynthia Delier. <laughs> the Delier family was comprised of four. There were three children now growing up, Nancy, Pete, and Christine. And there was the mother, Cynthia. And that was what perplexed the neighbors, how a mere four could create such constant pandemonium. Yes, to say that Cynthia Delaire and her family were merely eccentric is bearing very unkind to adjectives. Let's drop into the Delaire living room and observe them in person. All but mother, who hasn't arrived home yet. Why doesn't someone answer the door? Nancy? Please, you open the door. I'm washing my hair. Sorry, I'm busy. Hey, you get it, Christine. There's no one for me. I'll look. Oh, for heaven's sake. Peter Delir, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, you're certainly a revolting spectacle. Lob out like a washed-out beachcomber. I thought you said you were busy, nature boy. I'm busy relaxing, dear sister. Ha! <laughs> I, uh, I didn't think anybody lived here. You call this living? Uh, what do you want? Well, if I must be explicit, your furniture. Uh, are you Mrs. Delere? No, Miss Delere. Look, would you mind saying what you said over again? Well, it's very simple, Miss Delere. I represent the firm of Hackett and Chase. They're lawyers, and they represent... Don't tell me. Let me guess. Oh, let me. Our creditors. Right. And I've come to collect on the assorted notes they hold. Or you take the furniture? That, plus the house, the grounds, and other tangible properties. Oh, no. If you promise to take tone deaf over there at the piano, it's a deal. Pete, I heard that, and I resent it. Oh, this is awful. I'm sorry, Mr. Lear, but that's the way it is. Please understand it. It isn't anything personal. I just happen to be working my way through law school with this job. Oh, dear, there's always some trouble. Well, you might as well come in and wait for Mother. Thank you. <laughs> Sit down anywhere you like. The furniture's yours anyway. Oh, listen to that. 88 notes to choose from, and she can't find a good one. Christine, for heaven's sake, if you're going to play, you don't have to play so loudly. And anyway, the man's come for your piano. What did you say? This man wants some money, or out everything goes. Well, where's Mother? Out. Oh, oh, pardon me. This is my sister, Christine Delier. I'm Nancy, and this is Pete. Hi. Oh, my name's Newell, John Newell. Hello. Hello. Well, why on earth didn't Mother pay these people? Could be. She didn't have any money. I read somewhere there are people like that. Don't be flippant, Pete. You know perfectly well there's money. At least there always is on the first of the month. This is the tenth. No payments have been made for two years. Two years? Oh, dear, this is terrible. And Hackett and Chase have reached the limit of their patience. You can't blame them. No, no, I suppose not. Oh, dear, I wish Mother would come. Uh, Mr. Newell, can't we give you something? Uh, some tea? There's no tea, I looked. Uh, coffee? Oh, no, we're out of that, too. You don't have to make conversation, you know. I'm here on business. Oh, but, uh, well, that's no reason we can't be friends. No. No, it isn't. You know, you're really all right. I... I am? You really are. Oh. Well, I... Oh, I just realized my hair. I haven't finished drying it. Oh, I like it that way. It reminds me of, of limp noodles. Uh-oh. A conquest, Nancy. You'd better take advantage of it. Well, so long as you're not taking the piano today, I think I'll go meditate on my concerto. Get lost, Christine. Children? Children? 
Oh, here's Mother now, Mr. Newell. And Newell, I'm warning you. From now on, anything can happen. Oh, children, I've had the most wonderful afternoon. I... Oh, oh, well, what a charming young man. You must ask him to stay for dinner, Nancy. He came to see you, Mother. Well, he can still stay for dinner. Oh, but children, I want you to see what I've brought home. I found him in the park. Mo? What did I tell you, Newell? Mo, come here. I want you to meet everybody, and I want everybody to meet you. Yes, ma'am. Good heavens, who on earth is that? His whole name is Mordecai Smith. That's right, folks. But my friends call me Mo. You guys can call me Mo. Mo can cook. You mean really cook? Isn't that wonderful? As soon as he told me, I said, Mo, you shouldn't live alone. We need you. Yeah. You know how it is, living alone. You batch around a while and then you go off your feet. So I took up cooking to take me mind off me stomach. He was head chef at Leavenworth. But, Mother, that's a penitentiary. Well, of course it is, darling. Mother knows that. Mo was sent up three times, weren't you, Mo? Yeah, but I always got out on good behavior. But what was the use? I only had to go back oh. again. After all, a guy has to eat, and nobody would give me a job. You know how it is. Yes, yes, indeed, yes. We know. But as Shakespeare says, sweet are the uses of adversity. No, Mother, not Shakespeare now. Which, like the toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. And this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermon in stones, and good in everything. Gee, that was swell, lady. You can sure reel it off. You know any more. No any more, my dear man. I was one of America's foremost Shakespearean actresses. Mother, you must listen to me for just a moment. Mr. Newell wants to talk to you. Oh, how nice. I shall adore talking to Mr. Poole. Uh, the name is Newell. Oh, I'm sorry. And we'll talk in a minute, but first I must get Mo to work. Want that I should make you a cake for dinner? You can bake a cake? Sure. Show me a oven. Brother, if uh, you can produce a cake and our beer an excuse for a pantry, you're a magician. Peter, our larder is loaded. Show Mo our beautiful kitchen. Now, come on, Mo. It's up to you to produce the cake. I'll be right in, Mo. Oh, dear, I'm so happy about him. He's going to stay here and cook for us. An ex-convict live here? Well, why not? The poor man has to live someplace. Mother, it won't matter about Mo because he won't live here. You won't live here. None of us are going to live here. Mr. Newell has come for our house. Good heavens. So early in the afternoon? Oh, well, I wouldn't think of letting him take it now. Everything's so mussed up. And besides, Mo's using the kitchen. Mother, you don't understand. Mrs. Delir, the collection company I represent has a lien. They're coming tomorrow afternoon to take over the furniture and everything. Oh, oh, dear. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Take our house and furniture? Well, what are we going to do? Well, I don't know, Mrs. Delir. But my good young man, you must think of that. You just can't come dashing in, taking everything out from under us, making some without some provision. And I, well, I, I, I simply won't go to that Clark Hotel. It's grim. Don't you think it's grim? That lobby, for instance. Now, when I was studying interior decorating, yeah, I Delir, was no you, more... Of... You can't blame Hackett and Chase. I beg your pardon? Mother, that's the name of the firm he works for. It's not up to them to take care of us. We've got to take care of ourselves. You know, they haven't been paid a cent on the mortgages for two years. Well, really, do you, do you have to rush things so, Mr. Drew? The name is Newell. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. But actually, must we all be so downright serious about this simple little matter? Oh, Mother, it isn't a simple little matter. We've got to raise money somehow to pay them, or out we go. That's right, Mrs. Delere. And you look like such a nice young man. Let that be a lesson to you, Nancy. Never trust a good-looking young man. Oh, Mrs. Delera, I hate this as much as you do. <laughs> oh, that's a very pretty speech. But it doesn't give us back our house. Well, I, I know, but... And another thing. You simply can't take the house till after next Wednesday. But next week is Boy Scout Week. Boy Scout Week? Yes. Mother, what in heaven's name is that to do with taking our house? Well, because I felt I should do something about it. I don't ever want it said of me that I don't do my part in the building of youth. Yeah, yeah, yes, I know. But, Mother, what's that to do with Wednesday? I just dropped into Scout headquarters. I invited the Scoutmaster to lunch, and he's bringing a Boy Scout along. Remind me to get that youngster's name, dear. All I can remember is that it began with a T. T. 
Gee, what, what, oh, I don't want to mind. I, I want to have place cards, you know. Oh, Mother. Mother, we can't even feed ourselves, let alone a hungry scoutmaster in his charge. Well, still, we must do our part, dear. Oh, we mustn't be selfish. Anyway, I'm sure before they take the house, I'll be given time to think this over. I hate to remind you, Mrs. DeLere, but you've had two years to think it over. Well, uh, I don't believe in making snap judgments. Yes, I can see that. Besides, it wouldn't be fair to you or to Hackett and Run or whatever their silly names are. I'll call you tomorrow, Mr. Cruel. Newell. Oh, oh <laughs> yes. Well, tomorrow then, and we'll have a nice long talk. Goodbye. Oh. She's some woman, your mother. Yes, yes, isn't she? Oh, dear, I don't know what to do or, or what to tell you, except come and get it whenever you're ready. Well, maybe I can talk to my bosses. Maybe there's some way you could make payments. Look, none of us earn any money. We don't know how. We only know how to spend it. You see, we get an income, a small income, but that's gone almost as soon as we get it. Oh, Mr. Newell, you've been very nice, and I'm afraid you must think us pretty incompetent and silly. Well, the delirious <laughs> are kind of delirious. Oh. But I, uh... I'd like to come back and see you. I mean, when I'm not on business. Nancy! <laughs> yes, Mother? Tell Mr. Newell not to slam the door on his way out. Moe's cake will fall. <laughs> and don't you go fall for that nice Mr. Newell. Oh, Mother! It's all right, really. Besides, you finally got my name right. <laughs> The curtain falls on Act One of The Fabulous Deliers, starring Billy Burke as Cynthia Delere. Our curtain rises on Act Two of The Fabulous Deliers, starring Billy Burke as Cynthia Delere. The incredible Deliers, about to be dispossessed from their home in a foreclosure threatened by Hackett and Chase don't seem to be too much concerned about the crisis. Led by their whimsical mother, Cynthia, they have gathered around the dining room table and are enjoying the cake prepared by their new chef, Mo. It seems the Leavenworth loss was the Delir's gain. Boy, what a cake. Gosh, folks, I'm glad you like it. Oh, Mo, it's grand. We'll live like this from now on. Cakes, pies, everything. Mo says he can cook everything. Yes, ma'am. At Leavenworth, I cook for 3,000 and three meals a day, too. 3,000? Think of that. Mo? Mo, I've got an idea. Children, it's a wonderful idea. Ah, now, Mother, please, no more ideas. We're in enough trouble as it is. But this is an idea that will save our house and furniture and everything. We'll open an inn. We'll call it the uh, Cafe de Lea. How vulgar. Anything that makes money is not vulgar, Christine. If Mo can cook for 3,000 people, why not 50? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe Mother's got something there. But imagine us running an inn. Forget imagine. Well, other people do and make money. See, we'll have Mr. Newell. Am I right? Yes, Newell. Bring his two funny little men over, and we'll surprise them by proving that we can serve a perfectly wonderful luncheon. Then they'll tear up that lean thing, or whatever you call it, that they have to tear up when they take your house away, and then they'll let us stay on. Pete, I think you're right. But it does have something there. I'll be hostess. I've got a lovely tea gown that will be just the right thing. Nancy can be cashier. Pete can wait on the table. Christine can... Well, what can Christine do? Just as long as she doesn't play the piano, she can do anything. So, Mother, for once in your life, I really think you've got a paying idea. Well, of course I have, dear. If I do say it myself, your mother is a very clever, charming woman. Now, let me see. Oh, dear. I wonder where we should sit, Mr. Herkett. Herkett, Herkett. I mean, Hackett. Oh, Pete. Mmm, lunch smells wonderful. Pete, where shall I put him? Where should you put who, Mother? That dreadful man whose name begins with an H. The one who's coming in for the, you know, for the house. Oh. Well, the house is practically his. Uh, put him at the head of the table. Perfect, Pete, a perfect idea. Uh, by the way, Mother, what became of my black silk dressing robe? Oh, I gave it to Mercutio as for a cloak. Mercutio? I never heard of him. Oh, don't be tiresome, Pete. He's a perfectly marvelous character. Lived in Elizabethan times and had a violent temper. 
was run through with a sword, but died beautifully. You don't mind, do you, dear? Dying beautifully? Oh, no, loaning your robe. We're doing Romeo and Juliet in my dramatic class. I think costumes help such a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't got enough places at the table, have you? Well, of course I have one, two, three. Oh, the Boy Scout, and he's Scout Master. Boy Scout? Yes, remember, this is Boy Scout week in our city, and we must do our part. I'm sure Boy Scouts are always hungry, so I invited one to lunch. Only I still can't remember his name. It begins with... I think it begins with a T. Yes, T. Mm. T, that's right. Mm. He must be a very fat boy because the scout master said it would take a lot of food. Well, I guess Mo can take care of that, all right. And then I must find Christine. She play. She only knows one piece, Tale of the Vienna Wood. Be sure she plays that or we're dead. Oh, I'll make sure. That's so lovely with lunch. I always consider Strauss an excellent aid to digestion. Christine? Christine? Good heaven. Oh, there they are. Oh, dear. I didn't know it was so late. Nancy, answer the door, darling, right away. Yes, Mother. Oh. Oh, uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Lear. And, uh, Mr. Lear, this is Mr. Hackett, the head of the firm. Oh. Mr. Chase couldn't get away. Oh, never mind all that. I'm in a hurry. Just want to look things over, miss. See what condition furniture's in. Hmm. Cigarette burn, just as I thought. Now, look here, Neil. Oh, but, sir. Uh, and, and that cane, see that needs mending. Oh, and a wine stain. Disgraceful. Totally irresponsible people, strange to see. But every house, sir, has minor accidents now and then. Yes, 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 yes. But they've been repaired. Immediately repaired. Stitching time saves nine, you know. That little adage, remember, my boy. Hey, hey, Mrs. Dillier, we're going to see you. Them church down at the market forgot to do. Oh. oh, excuse me. Oh. Who's this creature? And stop waving that knife. Who, me? If I was to see that butcher, I'd use this knife. Mo, Mo, do go back into the kitchen. How do you do, gentlemen? How do you do? This is Mo. You mustn't mind him. He's just out of Leavenworth. A little unrestrained. Leavenworth? Murder? Uh, this is a plot. Mo never really killed anyone, except accidentally. Oh. And you'll forgive him even that after you've had lunch. Lunch? Why, who said anything about lunch? Well, that's what you're here for, oh. didn't you know? Oh, dear, dear, why don't people tell people things? Mm, I never eat lunch. Uh, my liver, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, but how lovely, because that leaves more for him, oh. <laughs> the Boy Scout. Oh. There's one coming for lunch. I told the Scout Master that the members of your firm were rather acting as hosts to him, because you know this is Boy Scout week. Oh, oh well, really, that's, uh, that's something of an imposition, madam, you know. Well, oh, you I... really are, you know, after all. It is your furniture and your house and... In a manner of speaking, your food, that certainly makes you host. Well, well, I hadn't thought of that. Then uh, everything's settled. You'll stay. Uh, oh, well, yeah. of course you will. How lovely of you. Just put your briefcase over there and make yourself at home. No, I'll take the briefcase. Hey, Mrs. Dillier, I gotta see you right away. Oh, oh, excuse me, I won't be a minute. Then we'll have lunch. What's that? What is it? It must be an earthquake. Now, just keep your heads, children. Don't run under any falling bricks. That's no earthquake, it's Boy Scout. Mother, what on earth are all those kids doing in our yard? Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's the Scout Master with that young Master T. Haven't I forgot to get his name? Oh, looks as though he's brought friends. Friends? He's brought a whole troop. Troop? Troop, of course. That was his name. Troop. Well, how wonderful of you to oh. think of it, young man. T. Hey, T. That's it, Troop. Good heavens, no wonder the Scout Master was worried about food. Oh, Mother dear, you didn't invite one Scout. You've asked a whole troop of them. A whole troop? <laughs> Scoutmaster Hill and Troop, reporting for lunch, ma'am. Oh, how nice to see you, Mr. Uh, all of you. Now, you must meet my family. This is my daughter, Nancy. Say hello to Scoutmaster Troop, dear. The name is Hill, Mr. Lear. Ah, glad to know you, Mr. Hill. And my daughter, Christine. How do you do? Glad to know you, Mr. Lear. Pete, my son, uh, uh, and uh, Mr. N Newell, and this charming, charming gentleman who has so delightfully offered to act as host, Mr. Hackett of Hit and Run. Uh, correction, please. The names are Hackett and Chase. I'm Hit It. I mean, I'm Run. Oh, oh what am I saying? Oh, well, what's in a name? A rose by any other would smell. Now, everybody, just relax. Boys, the place is yours. Dally as you will at the Café de Lear. 
Oh, not bad for a motto. Take over, Nancy, darling. I must away to the kitchen. Oh, but, Mother, you can't leave me like this. What am I going to do? Oh. Yes? What can you do? If we don't feed everybody, we'll be the laughing stock of the town. You've got to do something. You fed 3,000 men at Leavenworth. You've only got to feed 50 here at Delirium. Only one thing stopping me, ma'am. The grub. All I need is a truck garden and a Texas steer. Wait. Why didn't I think of it before? Mo, listen to me. We'll do this. And we'll have all the food we need. Now listen carefully. <laughs> Come and get it, boys. Anything more, boy? I'm sure Mo has plenty. It was sure swell, Mrs. Delaire, and thank you. And thank you, Mr. Hackett. Give our thanks to Mr. Chase, too. Well, he got through it all right. Both our names. Ah, wonderful troop. Wonderful boys. Uh -huh. Such leadership. Oh, what citizens these boys will grow up to be. Hackett and Chase are proud to be your hosts. <laughs> and as for our lovely hostess... Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Um, those papers, Mr... Uh... Oh, forget it, forget it, Mrs. Delir, forget it. From now on, we're really partners. Uh... It's Café Delir. Any woman who can cook for a whole troop of unexpected oh. guests... <laughs> oh, he's nothing. Oh, yes, yes, oh. you show them such a good time, can do anything. Mrs. Delir, the town is yours. Oh, bless you. How sweet you all are. How very, very sweet. Oh, you know, Mother Darling, I guess I was wrong. Once in a while, you do have an idea that works. Well, of course, dear. If I do say it myself, I think your mother is a very clever woman. <laughs> I want to say this, Mrs. Delir. This has been one of the most pleasantest days in my whole life. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, yes. And if this has run you, well, run you into any extra expense, now you, you just charge it to me. Oh, how sweet of you. But don't worry. Since you were the host, I have already charged it to you. <laughs> Wasn't that clever of me? <laughs> The curtain falls on Act Two of The Fabulous Deliers, starring Billy Burke. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Billy for her fine performance and contribution, and to compliment the supporting cast for its able assistance. Be sure to listen to your Theater of Stars next week. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Proudly We Hail is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.